Yeah, he never came in our direction, so I never had the chance to see him in person, but apparently he had a tremendous magnetism on stage. Yeah, he did. It was fabulous. I think his manager was an illegal alien or something. And <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't let him come. I don't know. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning into this video on Elvis is the Man. So I came across this clip that I saw a long time ago, and uh, I came across it again recently. And I'm like, you know what? This would make a really good video. And I, I thought it would be like kind of short, you know, just to the point. But then I started to think, ooh, yeah, I remember I should add this to it and that. And I started thinking about this. And then I started to get a script going because I wanted to make sure I had everything down. And I usually don't do like a script like that I would read. But, uh, you know, with like these videos, no joke, they take hours to make. Like the last two I took that I made took probably 18 hours. That may sound ridiculous, and it could be, but um, sometimes when I write a script, it saves me a lot of editing and all this. So if you haven't seen the last few, check it out. And I know most of I'm getting to the point. People who just want to see this video, just fast forward a minute. But um, I want to make sure, like, hit if you're a fan of this channel, hit the notification button. That way, when I make a video, you guys are notified and and know right away, click it or not, because it's nice to get that instant gratification after you spend hours and hours editing and making a video like the 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 uh, views right now on the last two videos are like five thousand, and that's very low considering how much time i put into it you know maybe it's not a topic that a lot of people are into but usually these videos um gain traction over time sometimes and by the end of the day people go watch them but if you could do me a favor hit the notification button so you see it right away so I'm like, yes, okay, sweet. It like it's paying off. Like they're watching it. I just didn't spend all that time making videos for them not to watch. Anyway, I think you understand. But like I said, so I'm gonna be reading a script for this, and I just started thinking of more and more things and and researched more things, and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's a little explanation about this video. Let's get to it. Yeah, he never came in our direction, so I never had the chance to see him in person, but apparently he had a tremendous magnetism on stage. Yeah, he did. It was fabulous. I think his manager was an illegal alien or something. And <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't let him come. I don't know. All right. All right, here it goes. So some of you Johnny Cash fans that click on this video, help me out with the year. I'm not quite sure. I'm guessing it's late 80s, sometime in the 90s. So you can hear the reporter mentioning how Elvis never came to their particular country to perform. Cash gave a surprising answer. He says, probably because Parker was an illegal alien. Now, I'm kind of surprised, like I think you are, how quick Johnny Cash was on that answer. You know, so I'm thinking, was it common knowledge back then? Or did Cash know because, you know, he was kind of acquainted with uh, the Presley estate? You know, and he was keeping up with what was going on. So a few questions come to mind along with that. Was it really common knowledge Colonel wasn't an illegal or wasn't a legal U.S. citizen? And also, is it is that the reason Elvis didn't go overseas to perform? You know, it's a possibility. You know, like I've said before, it's ultimately Elvis who chose not to. But, you know, that, that was a, probably a big factor. And finally, did Elvis know Parker wasn't an American citizen? Well, for the first question, Cash was a friend of Elvis. So I'm sure he kept up with the Elvis news and the state after Elvis's passing in 1977 that summer. It was public knowledge that he was an illegal immigrant. Somehow, Parker was able to join the U.S. Army in 1932. So I'm giving you a bit of a backstory. He was able to join without papers, you know, proving his citizenship three years before Elvis was born. So remember, the 1932, we're going back. But Parker went AWOL, and he spent a short time in prison. The Presley estate sued Parker in the early 80s. It was actually, I think, 1979. And uh, Parker used this as an alibi, that he was a man of no country. You know, it came out then for sure that, you know, Parker was actually from the Netherlands, officially. He used that to get out of, um, you know, what the state 
said that Parker owed him. Now, an, an attorney appointed by the Shelby County judge that was over the suit discovered Parker was getting 50% of all the money generated by Elvis since his death and had, had already defrauded the Presley estate of nearly $7 million since 1977. Now, this was 1980. An out-of-court settlement was re reached with Parker at one point claiming to be a man without a country, like I said, or something to that effect, uh, to try to get out of the uh, predicament. So I'm going to try to pronounce this right. So Parker's name was not Colonel Tom Parker. That was a name given to him by uh, like an honorary uh, by uh, a governor of a certain state. I can't remember right now, but I'll type it in for you. His actual name was Andreas Cornelis von Kook or something like that. I mean, he was kooky, but uh, K-U-I-J-K. And he was born in 1909 in the Netherlands. He came to America on a ship in the 1920s. Allegedly escaping a murder he was involved in. I heard this was like his sister or something like that. And if that were the case, that could be why he never wanted to try to gain citizenship. You know, with all the connections that he had later on. Um, you know, fearing he might be found out, you know, because if Parker, okay, he wasn't a legal citizen, he did not have a valid citizenship, but you know, he, in the fifties, sixties, he could have been like, he could have went up to one of, you know, some, some connection he had. I mean, he was friends with uh, Eisenhower, I believe it was, or, um, who was it? I think it was, uh, Lyndon Johnson. I mean, he could have got, they could have helped him out, but if he really did come here, um, to escape, what was going on back in the Netherlands, you know, that could be the reason why he never really tried to. He just wanted to stay put. Now, when Elvis was drafted, the excuse that Parker gave for not seeing Elvis in Germany was, you know, that he needed to stay back and manage Elvis's affairs and careers and made sure that Elvis was still relevant by the time he got out of the army. So I personally think that Parker was afraid to go overseas um, and have Elvis tour, you know, because, you know, what if something happened? What if they, what if they f really found out, you know, this is the early, late sixties, early seventies, mid seventies that, you know, Parker was not a citizen and he had problems getting back in the U S and all this stuff. I mean, that's, that could be a legit reason why, you know, Parker gave Elvis uh lame excuses like, Oh, you know, we can't get security right for overseas touring. And all oh, the venues aren't, uh, they're not big enough for you. And, uh, some people also mentioned that, you know, Elvis couldn't get over there with the pills and, and guns and stuff they had to take. But come on, it's Elvis. He was able to get aboard a plane in December 1970 when he actually, you know, tried to uh, fly to Washington to see Joyce Bulba. Um, he stopped the plane himself. He had weapons like Elvis was Elvis. They let him. He could have got away with it. I think it's all lame excuses. But like I said, at the end of the day. It was Elvis. He could have ditched Parker, all that. But I won't go into that. I've done that in other videos, which you can check out. So the final question here is, did Elvis know that Parker was not an American citizen? Now, I think Elvis probably... So in the early 60s, I believe it was when Elvis was filming Follow That Dream, Parker had a family member come to visit him. I think it was off the top of my head. I think it was a cousin. And they noted, you know, the whole accent and it, Elvis knew that Parker was probably overseas. Um, even some of the band members like the, the DJ Fontana and Scotty, they, they noted like, man, this guy, you know, he seems a little funny. I think it was one of those things that Elvis kind of put it out of his head. I just don't want to know if things are going well. Why shake? Why rock the boat? But I was reading the book. Uh, last year, so in 2023, the book Being Elvis, A Lonely Life by Ray Connolly. I did a couple reviews on it. I really suggest you check out that book and I'll link uh, the review I'm referring to in a minute here right in this description so you can check it out. The book says that Elvis came across a fan magazine that was saying that there was an article in this particular magazine saying that Parker was not 
a legit American citizen. And this was 1977 when Elvis was reading this. I don't remember all the details right now, but if you check out that video, I put I laid it all out in there. So I think that by the end of Elvis's life, he was pretty sure of all the shady things that Parker was doing. And a lot of reports, especially from the Memphis Mafia, saying he was getting ready to really fire him for good and, and turn over a whole new leaf. We all know that Elvis wanted to do that in 1973, but he didn't because he got scared. Um, you know, that he might have to pay this huge fake phony bill that Parker drew up. And I'm so happy that the Elvis movie really laid this out for all time fans to see. But when I watched that Johnny Cash video that I played at the beginning of this video, it, it brought all these questions to mind. And I wanted some of the fans that never actually heard the backstory about Parker to know what was going on. Parker helped Elvis a lot out out a lot in the 50s, getting him on TV a little faster. He had connections, getting him into Hollywood. But after Parker, but after Elvis came home from the army, I can't really think of anything he did that was good. Really, I like what did he do? And some reports even even say some people think that Parker was actually behind Elvis getting drafted because he was being too divisive and he needed to straighten Elvis out and get him to be more of like a, a like a more palatable to the grown-ups in America and you know if if that's the case as well holy crap man that could have caused Gladys's death early death but anyway that's my thoughts on this matter like I, yep I knew it was going to be a long video so like I said hit the notification button I would appreciate it um and let you know whenever I put out a video I mean, I know you guys come to it eventually, but it's nice to see, you know, you guys are watching it right off the bat. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll talk to you next time.